Welcome to Align to Your Design. I'm your host, Beth Davis. Isn't it time to wrap your business around your purpose and bring your greatest work to the world? Each week, join me as we explore various biometric tools, such as human design and hand analysis, and how to use them to fulfill your destiny and align to your design. We will reveal how to do the work you are designed to do, rather than what you think you should do. Hey everyone, Beth Davis here. How are you? You are listening and or watching my podcast, Align to Your Design. And on this show, I bring on people who I feel are fully embodied in their purpose. They're living their purpose out in the world. They're getting paid to do the work that they love to do. They're in their genius zone. And they are also people that I find uh, very uplifting. Uh, They provide a lot of hope, a lot of insight, a lot of inspiration, education, uh, illumination into how you can be more fully in your life. And when I say embodied, I mean in your physical body, you feel your butt on the chair, your feet on the ground, uh, the, the tips of your fingers, you're connected to you. And when you're connected to yourself, that's when you can bring your greatest gifts to the world. So I'm so happy to have you. Our audience keeps growing. And today, our focus is on what stops women, in particular, from being visible in promoting their business? What is it that gets in the way? And what are some things we can do about this dilemma, this fear of being visible, uh, to put our best foot forward? So I wanna share about our host today. Uh, I'm gonna share with you uh, a little bit about her. Her name is Jessica McIntosh, and she is a Nashville, Tennessee-based branding and portrait photographer who has been doing this work for over a decade. She is the mom to two boys and she's married to a lovely man named Brett and they've been together for 12 years. She's worked with companies like Gaylord Hotels, Marriott Hotels, Twice Daily, Graystar, Franklin Road Academy, Lifeway Christian Resources, the American Heart Association, White Bison, and others. Jessica's experience ranges from executives and business owners looking for personal branding and lifestyle shoots to families who ask her to capture engagements, weddings, maternity, senior pictures, and all of life's special experiences in between. As Jessica likes to say, telling your story and helping to see yourself as important is a very, very powerful thing. And she helps you do that with a camera in her hand. So let us now welcome to Align to Your Design, the wonderfully talented and generous spirit, Jessica McIntosh. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Beth. Thank you so much. What a wonderful intro. Gosh, thank you. You're welcome. Well, it's so wonderful to be with you. You have now done two photo shoots for me. Yay, yes. And I'm a big fan budget allowing of <laughs> at least one shoot a year, but actually preferably two, because yeah. I feel about every six months we change. You can really see it in our appearance and our energy. Right. And I think keeping the visual aligned with where we are in our growth track is very important. Absolutely. So before we get into what stops women from being visible Ooh. and what they can do about it. Will you share with everyone how you ended up choosing photography? Like yeah. what led to that? Because I believe you were a model for a time. You were in That's front right. of the camera and That's now right. you're behind the camera, making all of us look really amazing. <laughs> so I try. How, how, you do, you do a great job. How did that happen? Yeah. Um, well, thanks for asking. Yeah. I, I, um, I grew up in a home where my mom was committed to videoing, photographing everything. And so pictures were just really early. She had the John 
giant camcorder on her shoulder. And just really early, I saw the value of a photograph. And um, when I became a teenager, I did, I started modeling and I was really interested in like, I would be in front of the camera and I would ask the photographer, like, how are you making me look like that? And I was very fortunate to be surrounded by people who would tell me. Um, They started to show me what lighting did and, and what cameras they were using and how they edited things and just all of this. And it was, it was such a fun time. Um, I really fell in love with the fashion and the dresses and just the beauty uh, side of photography. And then when I was about 15, my dad passed away suddenly from a heart attack and um, those photos that my mom had spent so much of my childhood capturing Um, suddenly became kind of the only means that I had to kind of look back at my past and, and kind of that history and that value um, just took on a whole new meaning for me. And so I had this kind of um, this value of, of history and where you came from mixed with this like love of beauty and fashion. And somehow that kind of intermingled um, into what my photography journey has looked like, which is um, both making sure things are beautiful and fun and vibrant, but just really honoring people and specifically honoring women um, where they come from, who they are and who they want to be remembered as um, is just really important and valuable to me. Um, And so here, here I am many years later, I did, I went to photography school and, and did all that, uh, worked under different photographers in the industry and, and just really got to understand the technical side of things that we need to know. Um, and then just have grown in this space over the last 12, 13 years. It's been a while now. Wow. What do you think are two or three of the major reasons that women in business struggle with getting in front of the camera? Ooh, oh man. Well, there's a list <laughs> for sure. <laughs> there's a list. Um, they can come up with about a million different things. Um, I would say number one is time. Um, they don't, they give, as women, I feel like oftentimes we give so much of our time to other people, um, whether it's our families, if, if you have a family, um, to a relationship, um, to your work, Um, but not to yourself oftentimes. Um, And so kind of giving themselves permission um, to actually spend time on them and figuring Mm -hmm. out what they want and who they are um, and not just kind of propelling everything forward all the time. So I would say time. And then um, they they also, we are constantly telling ourselves the story that at some point I will be worth putting myself out there, putting myself in front of the camera. I will finally have lost enough weight, um, uh, look a certain way, have gotten to a certain point in my career. Um, things will slow down. There's a kind of a, a list of things that we can create in our head to say, no, 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 not yet. Not like I am now. I don't, nobody wants to see this. It's kind of this story that we will oftentimes tell ourselves. Um, so I feel like time that, that permission that we have to give ourselves to invest in ourselves and then the, the permission and the courage to accept ourselves as we are and to say that we are worthy of being seen and of being visible, um, just as we are not a future version of ourselves, but who we are right now, whatever that is, is worth being seen. Um, that's gosh, I, it's like a, as anytime we get together it, it, and talk about women and we all get in a room, I can't, there are very, very few women ever tell me, Oh gosh, I just love having my picture made. Um, you know, nobody really says that. Um, everybody's like, Oh gosh, I hate getting my picture made. And so my goal is to help women leave a photo shoot and actually say like, that was really fun. Mm-hmm. And I feel really good. And I feel seen. Mm-hmm. And I know that I'm worth I'm, I'm worth this. I'm Mm -hmm. worth being visible um, to my community, not just, not just for the sake of doing it, but for the greater good, Mm -hmm. what you have to bring to the table, people need to see. And so we just have to remind each other of that constantly. Mm. Oh, wow. Very insightful. How did (laughs) I have, I have another question, but before I get to that question, how did, (laughs) how did you, conquer those insecurities in yourself 
What was the oh. process Jessica took herself through to realize that Jessica, mm-hmm. even though you're a mom, you're a wife, you've, you're, you're a daughter, you have all these roles, women have all these roles. Yeah. Yeah. But you're a very confident, integrated person. And mm-hmm. what, what did you do for you to foster this confidence you have to be also a business owner? Yeah. Um, Gosh, well, thank you for saying that um, and just affirming that in me. I would say it's a process. Um, I have not arrived. It is a struggle. It's a struggle when I say to myself and my kids, hey, we're going to have family pictures taken of us. And now I'm going to put my face on our Christmas card. Like that's, you know, that's a silly, that has nothing to do with my business. That's just a personal hurdle. We look at photos of ourselves and immediately, it's almost like before we can say something good, we have to say something bad or deprecating, or just acknowledge that this isn't quite perfect enough um, before we can say, oh, that looks nice, or that, yeah, that's fine. Um, and so it's, it's a constant practice um, yeah. for myself. Yeah. It, it really is. It's a, it's a constant practice. Um, I have spent many years, you know, the 30-year-old version of me now versus the teenager of me that was a model is very different. And so just learning to accept and appreciate myself um, and the people that I love that are around me, you know, my kids, they don't look at me and say like, mom, you're too, your arms are too big to be in a picture. Mom, your face is too wrinkly to be in a picture. You have too many zits on your face to be in our picture. No, my children do not. They have never, they might have commented on my acne. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, that's usually harmless and just an observation more than anything. Um, but they, they hug me and they love me. And I want to remember what life was like with them. Um, I want to remember what life is like for me. And life is not always kind of a fitness box. If we only remember the really pretty, perfect Photoshopped versions of ourselves, we are leaving out such a big chunk of our lives and who we are. And I, something I constantly say that I preach to the choir and I preach to myself is real life is beautiful. And so I have to believe that for myself, if I'm going to empower other women and kind of give them the gift that their real life, who they are right now is really beautiful. Um, I'm constantly saying that to myself mm-hmm. um, and it's hard. There, uh, there are good days and, and there are bad days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what would you uh, suggest to women who, and even men in this yeah. instance, that are feeling yeah. that they, well, they know that they need to be visible mm-hmm. and yet they're feeling hesitant for whatever reason. Yeah. What, what, what would you suggest that these individuals could do to bolster their confidence pre photo shoot? So that they're going, even though I'm always nervous before a photo shoot and I'm an extroverted, relatively confident person, even I get like sweaty palms and sweaty brow and get a little anxious about how's it going to turn out. So, you know, someone's really shy. Maybe they're more on the introverted scale in terms of their personality. What are some things people can do to bolster their confidence? Yeah, a photo shoot is so vulnerable. You know, we are literally letting another person see us at our, at every moment, at every blink, at every turn. Is this okay? Is that okay? And so it's really vulnerable. So it's, it would make complete sense that we're nervous. Even the most like you extroverted, you know, beautiful, confident person is still going to feel a little, you know, insecure in that moment. Um, And so I would say if, if you are on the edge, if you're, if you're anxious, if you're shy, if you're really trying to kind of talk yourself up to doing this. Um, Number one, you're worth it. You're worth it where you are right now. And you have to do nothing else to get yourself ready for this because you're ready because you are great, just like you are. Um, And so I would say, you know, really sit down and think about what is it that you want to show and stop. I would say stop looking and scrolling Instagram because that, um, that, that comparison is a thief of joy. Mm -hmm. You are going to talk yourself out of, I don't look like this person. I don't look like that. I don't know how to pose like that. I blah, blah. I can't, I can't, I can't. So you're going to talk yourself out of it. So number one, quit scrolling. (laughs) 
and, and write down what it is that you want, like write down what it is that makes you spark, what it is that makes people attracted to you, what it is that you serve people, what is your gift, what are you giving the world? And then think about how you want to show that, you know, maybe for one person, you know, just a really great headshot and, and a couple of, um, you know, banner images or lifestyle images could be all that they need, mm -hmm. you know, and then there's, there's other people that may need rotating content. You, you might have to think ahead and really plan for the year about what you need to show in order to grab people's attention in this visible world. So you need to really think about who you are and what you have to offer the world. And then think about how you want to show that, you know, what do I need? What do I want to show? And even if you don't hire a professional photographer right away, just start practicing with showing your, your life, like your real life, um, taking your own, uh, we're great at the selfie, you know, we've all mastered a good selfie, I'm sure. So take a selfie or show, just start kind of revealing little parts of you as you start to get comfortable with it. Um, I do highly recommend working with a professional and talking to them, you know, before uh, talking with the photographer to make sure one that your personalities gel. Um, you know, is this somebody, if you're really shy and reserved and this person is like, boom, 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 and in your face and all over the place, you just might kind of retreat into your shell and not feel like you at all. You know, maybe you need to find it and maybe you're the opposite. Maybe that person can really help pull something out of you. So interview some photographers, you know, just because you talk to someone doesn't mean you have to hire them. Anytime I talk to a client, I'm there to listen about what their needs are and then tell them how I feel like I could meet those needs. And then it's up to them to decide, yeah, I feel like she could really help me master or get the results that I'm looking for. So interview people. Um, don't feel like you just have to look at a website and make your decision from there. You might mm -hmm. be able to, but if, if personality and, and really helping you with posing or feeling comfortable in front of the camera or even deciding what you want, maybe you need someone that's going to be a little bit more hands-on than just showing up day of. Um, that's all research that you can start to do before that's going to help put you at ease and like take the hot seat off of you. And you kind of get to interview your photographer a little bit um, to find out if they're going to be a good match for you um, because you they're that's going to be a really vulnerable time. So you want to make sure they're going to match your energy or help pull out the energy that you need. Mm, yeah, that's well said. It, that's a really good point in the sense of being a uh, feeling emotionally safe mm -hmm. and having an emotional connection with the photographer, because that's yes. going to elicit powerful expressions. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. and you're going to, your body's going to be more at ease if you feel comfortable with the photographer. That, that is terrific advice. Yes. And then my favorite one that is just simply a confidence booster for me personally, this may not be true for everyone. Um, but I say getting yourself into a position to where you're going to feel good and confident. You know, you want to think about your wardrobe. If you need to talk to a consultant about that, do it. This is you're investing in your business and in your livelihood and in, and in yourself. And so don't feel like, Oh, I'll just all throw something together last minute, you know? Think about it ahead of time. Talk to a consultant. Um, talk to your photographer about what your wardrobe's going to look like so that you're not just showing up day of, you know, like, ah, I don't know. You know, you want to try it on and make sure it feels good on your body, that you feel good and confident in it. Um, and then my other favorite thing is, is hair and makeup. Um, not to make yourself not look like you. That's never what I'm wanting people to do. In fact, I work to, typically, I like to work with artists that help just accentuate what is there and talking with the client about what they want to show and what they want to look like, you know, and maybe they want to look so natural and just that time in the hair and makeup chair, is just kind of relaxing. Mm. Um, you're investing in yourself and feeling good. It doesn't mean you have to get, you know, a crazy eyeshadow and lips that aren't like you at all. Um, it's just a really nice time to relax and reflect and just, it kind of brings you into your session with this new confidence that mm. I really, I love to see when I photograph people. It, I just kind of see them like turn on. Um, and I really love that. What are some things uh, an individual could do to prepare for a business branding shoot? You have some mm. great suggestions around that yeah. things to be thinking of in advance of the shoot. What are some things? 
Yeah. They can do. I mean, they definitely need to get together their, um, their branding colors. You know, if you already have a website or maybe you're working toward building one, you need to think about what your, what your brand looks like. And that's going to really reflect, you know, location for your photo shoot that you'll talk to your photographer about, um, you know, what kind of poses that you need to work on. Do you just, do you just need a headshot? That's also something you've got to decide. Do you need a headshot or do you need a branding session? Cause those are mm-hmm. two very different things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so a, you can, a headshot can be a part of a branding session. Um, but if you just get a headshot, that's just, you know, here to here, <laughs> that's all we're focusing on. So you definitely want to make that decision. What do you need? What kind of photos do you need? Um, do you need stuff of you in an office? Do you need stuff of you at home? Do you, you need um, images of you interacting with clients, whatever your industry is. You've really got to think through what that is. Um, is this just a photo shoot to help get you out there and get you visible and feel beautiful? That's okay to say too. You don't have to disguise it as anything else. You just need to decide what it is and, and then communicate that. So thinking about your branding colors, thinking about about your business and what type of images you need, whether it's for your website, for social media, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, I mean, you know, whatever you need. Um, you have to think about those things so that the photographer can know um, if I'm shooting a banner image, I have got to give you a lot of space. Um, but if I'm shooting, you know, just a headshot or if we're shooting, you know, something for Instagram, then it's going to be a square. Um, so thinking through what type of images you need is huge and how they will be used um, is really, really helpful to your photographer. Um, and then thinking through, like we were talking about earlier, your wardrobe, hair and makeup, these are all little things that your photographer can help you with most of the time, um, help you with either a recommendation or I, I have packages for my clients where I do all of that for them. And so I just know these are the people I work with. They're so great at it. They do what I um they treat my clients the way that I want them to be treated. And so I just have this great team of people that I can bring in. Um, So yeah, you've just got to think through what do you want your business and then articulate it. I love the very (laughs) first time I worked with you, you already had your colors, you had pictures you sent me, you know, it was, Oh, it was so wonderful. And that's not, that does not necessarily happen every time. (laughs) Um, But it is so great when it does, because it is so helpful. It gives me inspiration to then, help kind of create what this world is going to look like for your photos. Beautiful. Wonderful. And one, uh, one other thing that I think is a good tip is remember to get a lot of horizontal shots with open space on the right right. or left side for your website and, and Facebook banners and other rectangle shaped that's right. Positioning screens, because if you're only getting those vertical shots, you don't necessarily have uh, images where you can put an opt-in box or That's copy right. uh, or right. quote, that kind of thing. That's Wonderful. Right. Yeah. So before we take a quick look at your human design, mm. um, you are a manifesting generator and uh, manifesting generators are considered the express builders Right. of the world. Uh, you have a gift for knowing which steps to skip. Hmm. And as a result, it's very important. You move slowly and methodically and don't rush because, because yeah. you're so efficient, you could miss an important step. That's right. Right. So, so it's like that, that the slow is fast yeah. for the manifesting <laughs> generator because you already move faster than all the other types. Yes. You also have the greatest capacity to get things done because of this built-in efficiency. So manifesting generators are actually really good at juggling family, work commitments, multiple businesses. It's what you're built for. The other types really are not designed to carry as much, although many of them try because of societal conditioning. Mm -hmm. But the manifesting generators really are the ones who are designed biologically to take on a, a lifestyle of juggling various priorities. Wow. So, so yeah. don't ever feel like I would just encourage you to not worry about streamlining your life too much because yeah. you're always going to have different things in the air. It's the nature right. of your design. Uh, with that, is there one area that you'd like to explore today? I always ask our guests 
oh. to, to share with me one thing that's been rumbling around in there that you are you know, willing to explore, obviously, on a public podcast Yeah, that, that we could then just quickly look at your chart and see what's happening. Yeah, I do feel like, you know, as somebody that does kind of feel like you can juggle multiple things and kind of keep them going. One of the things that we've talked about, Beth, is um, when we slow down, like when I myself slow down and even looking ahead so much at 2022, I can feel so overwhelmed or even just kind of like into myself with what do I, how am I moving forward? You know, what am I doing next? If I don't have, um, a very specific kind of, uh, thing that I'm moving towards or something, or, uh, even a client, or if I don't have something, I have something on the horizon, but maybe it's a little farther off. And so I can start to feel kind of lost in myself and finding that motivation to move forward. And so I would love to explore that. What do I do when I'm not I'm not generating. <laughs> right. So, so yeah. something, something to respond to something that might be motivating. Okay, great. Yeah. I'm going to bring up your chart and I'm just going to bring up the body graph part because I think this will, mm. I'm just going to get into the actual circuit board. So we'll bring that cool. up. Okay. Here's your chart mm. and what a wonderful chart it is. Look at this. Look at this. Okay. So to your question, there's many, many different ways we could look at what's maybe going to help you stay motivated uh, yeah. when you maybe are in a funk or yeah. uh, maybe you've completed a project and you don't really know what's next or yeah. um, whatever the reason, whatever yeah. the reason. So one of the things I look at when it comes to work so we actually go over the design side of the chart. I'm not going to explain the whole thing, but when we look at the position of Mars and Mars is the, the symbol, the circle with the arrow, right? When we look at Mars on the design side of the chart, the, the position of Mars there is about your physical energy. Hmm. Mars is about that masculine yang part of us that moves things forward. And for you, you actually have it in gate 52, which is a gate of stillness. Wow. It's called the mountain. Huh. And if you think about, say, mountain pose in yoga, mm -hmm. it's about being still even when it's not so easy to stay still. Wow. And what this would indicate is when you are feeling that things aren't moving, that is actually the best time for you to stop moving hmm. and go inward. Wow. Meditate, get still, hmm. or do something like yoga or Pilates or even a walking meditation yeah. where let's say you go to a nice trail and you walk and then you sit still for a bit and mm -hmm. contemplate, and then you walk a little bit more, and then you sit still. You have the 952 channel, which is really an incredible channel to have in any chart. Anyone who has this 952 has something really special. So let's talk about this. Yeah. Because the 952 channel, and in you, it's all in red. So the, it means this is a little bit unconscious to you, this capacity, although I bet life has shown you. You have an incredible ability to sit still and handle details. Mm. Yeah. So you, let's say you finished a photo shoot. Mm -hmm. You have the ability to then sit down and go through all those photos, organize mm -hmm. the photos, pick out the best photos, make suggestions on the photos the person might want to use all of the things, all the yeah. details and the nine energy focuses in on the details and the 52 keeps your butt in the chair. <laughs> yeah. Right. And it's the thing is, it's a line three energy, 52 line three. And the lines are right after the decimal point. We don't have to worry about this next number. That's a whole other conversation. But the first number to the right of the decimal point is never higher than six because oh. there's only six lines in a hexagram. So okay. the number to the right of the decimal point will always be always in human design, a number between one and six. 
And each one of these lines has a different frequency. When we're talking line three, it's about strategy. Interesting. So one of the things that helps you move forward is to actually sit still with yourself and ask, what is my strategy? Hmm. That would be a very good thing for you to think about for 2022. What is my strategy for 2022? And then look at your calendar and build in the stillness. Hmm. When's, your med- when's your meditation time? When's your contemplation time? When's your planning time? When's your vacations? Yeah. Putting more and more stillness actually allows you to go further faster. It's counterintuitive. Mm. And the other thing you're able to do, because the nine is actually part of your core genius up here, design earth is core genius. Your core genius is a strategy for details. Okay. A strategy for details. And you Mm. also have the left eye. Gate 11 represents the left eye and left eye is the eye that sees new ideas, that sees Uh, new stories, that that builds new pathways through imagery. mm -hmm. Uh, So photography is perfect, but you already know that. Uh, So you have a strategy capacity with this 952 channel. We've got the 52 in multiple locations. Wow. So we know it's very important in your design. This 52 energy is, is a very important fuel. And it's the, it's the fuel for stick to It's the mm. fuel for staying all the way through the process of a project. Mm. This is an excellent energy to have if you are a filmmaker, because making a film is often a two to 10 year process, depending on the film. Yeah. Uh, the process you take clients through with their photo shoots it's not a one and done in an afternoon. It's a whole process. There's That's the right. pre-production, the production, and the post-production. Yeah. That is where you excel. So yes. if I were to encourage you to take your business to the next level mm. as a business consultant, right, which yeah. is pretty much what I am yeah. using, using various tools, I would suggest to you for 2022 to build out a three-part process for your clients. Ooh, yeah. The pre-production, the production itself and post-production and have it on your website, the process. Yeah. Have paperwork online, obviously, that people can fill out for the process. Yeah. May, the more detail and yet keeping it simple, that's the trick. Yeah. The more detail you can extract from these three phases of the process the more satisfied you and the client are going to be. Yes. Yeah. So this is, this is the essence for you, Jessica, of yeah. what actually moves you forward mm-hmm. is your capacity to be more thorough. Yes. With your strategy. Oh, that's so good. And it's so, that's so crazy because I oftentimes with clients, I feel robbed when I don't, and I feel like I can't even serve them the way I want to, when we like skip these steps or if I can't do the whole process, I just feel so like, Oh, like if only I had been able to do X, Y, and Z, you know, maybe time only allowed for this, or maybe their schedule only allowed for this, or, you know, even maybe I don't have this process completely laid out for them. And so, you know, we thought like, Oh, we can just skip over this and we can't. Um, I've, I can't, I, I really feel like it does a disservice um, to them and, and to the process and to what they get at the end. Right. Um, so this is a good new boundary for you. Yeah. This is something huge. you can bring to the forefront in your, with your future work with clients Yeah. that perhaps you don't work with people, for example, yeah. who are not willing to sign, sign an agreement that they will fully engage with the pre-production, the production and post-production processes so that you can do your very best work. Because when you can do your very best work, the chance of the client being highly satisfied goes through the roof. That's right. It's really all for them. It is all for them. I feel like I can't deliver the best, you know, it it will be good. And in some cases it's, 
that's all you need is good. But I like have this deep desire for it to be the best. Exactly. And, and so it's, it's so interesting that like, even what you were saying, those things, not being uh, me, not being aware of them. It's something that I've talked about doing for years and just, it's like, Oh, well, you know, sometimes people don't have time or I get it. We just need, they just need to do this quickly, you know, Oh, they need to meet a deadline. Okay. We'll try to speed this up. Um, and so, but whenever I do that, I always just have this little thing inside of me. That's like, Oh, but it could have been better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just as an aside to that, we don't have uh, much time left to get into this. However, one of the aspects of human design is motivation. Mm. And you and I share the same motivation, which is called desire. Yeah. There are only six motivations, (laughs) fear, hope, desire, need, guilt, and innocence. Oh, and to just for anyone with guilt motivation, guilt motivation is finding out where we're guilty and other people are guilty in order to fix things. It's about fixing things. It isn't about giving people guilt trips. It's about where you're going to feel guilty if you don't fix things. At any rate, desire is about moving things forward Mm -hmm. and the transference or not self behavior is going into innocence. So where Mm -hmm. you put off putting this in place now is your Mm -hmm. innocence. So every time Jessica's like, oh, I'll get to that, you're going into innocence. When in fact, when things arise in your life, arise in the field around Jessica, this even this conversation we're having. Yeah. That's the universe saying to you, direct your desire. (laughs) Direct your desire to these next steps. So what moves you forward is taking space Mm. to be thorough and not worrying about how long it's taking to put it in place. It's trusting the methodical step-by-step nature of what it is you're creating. Because the thing is, if you take 2022 to clean up all your processes, Mm -hmm. think about where your career can go in the subsequent years. Yeah. And how I can serve. That's right. The people around me. That's right. So you're, you're you're already, uh, very successful, you work as a photographer, you have wonderful clients. So imagine what becomes yeah. possible when you grant yourself the same space you give your subject. That's right. Oh, man. What a great, great word. Thank you for that, Beth. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. What's the word you're going to take? Oh, um. Well, it's something that's so interesting is like you said about me taking up space. And when I actually take up that space, I'm allowed to take up space. And actually I serve the people around me better when I do it. That is, uh, we've talked some about personal life and, and, you know, trauma and that sort of thing. And so the idea of taking up space is kind of scary. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to shrink back, even as women, we want to shrink back and make ourselves smaller. And then to deal with your own personal issues on top of that, just being told that by taking up space, by doing the thing that feels almost terrifying to step into, I'm actually serving better. Yeah. So the, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, the irony is that when we live our design Mm. rather than our not self, which is what the majority of humans are doing until they get conscious of it. Yeah. When we live in our not self and we either, it will go usually one of two ways. People either become overly solicitous of others Mm. and become enablers like you said about so many women time yeah. right from the yeah. beginning, right. Of our we're coming full circle with our, with our conversation today, That's right. women don't make the time for themselves. The irony is that when you look at what is in your design, the circuits mm-hmm. that are you and you make you a priority, your capacity to actually be there for another person or a group of people actually serve humanity with your greatest gifts yeah. is unlimited. Mm. is massive and so fulfilling. But the irony is the more we keep putting ourselves on hold, the more we put our whole life on hold and then no one is served. So I find it quite a paradox that the more you become um, 
a champion of self-love and self-compassion. Yes. The, the more you can serve others. Yep. Uh. So I'm very excited about this time today. We need to wrap up here. I want to tell everyone, go to jessicamackintosh.net. And you can see her incredible work. A lot of you are listening to this, so we won't bring it up on the screen. Suffice to say, her website is beautiful. And you might recognize the person on the Maybe. homepage. <laughs> both of us are on. Why is so many recognize? Both of us are currently on the homepage at jessicamackintosh.net. The yeah. link is in the show notes. Jessica, any final words for our wonderful audience? Oh, gosh. Just keep going. Be visible. If you're afraid, step into it um, and listen to Beth because, you know, just in my like a little short time here, I'm like, you know, got goosebumps and now my unmotivated self feels like I need to go like run and sit, write all my processes out right now. So yes, will so you do that? Into it. I will, will you do, do that. I will be your, account- I'll be your accountability buddy. Will you text me when you've done it? Oh my gosh, I will. I'm going to do it. All right. I'm and you don't have to now. get it all done in one day, but just That's text right. me when you're going to start just start and just say, hey, I started, I put in an hour and tomorrow I'm going to do this. Yeah, I'll be That's your accountability right. buddy. I yes, this is wonderful. This is wonderful. Oh. Beth, thank you. And I look so forward to hopefully getting to talk to more of your of your tribe, of your people and, yeah. and help them kind of overcome that just fear of it being visible. So if they have questions, if, you know, I live in Tennessee, I do travel, but if you can't get here, or you can't have me travel, I'm still happy to help you you know, work through some of those questions to find the photographer that's a right fit for you wherever you are. So feel free to reach out. Wonderful. Well, thank you, everyone. This has been another episode of Align to Your Design and we'll see you all soon. Bye for now. Bye. you enjoyed this episode of Align to Your Design? If you did, please grab my free report, Business by Design, at yourpurpose.com and then join our Facebook group, Align to Your Design. See you next time.